Okay, Donna Louise Chiquetto, born January 5th, 1946, to Ellen and Frank Chiquetto, and preceded by Le Sister Loretta. When Donna came into the family, Loretta was nine years old, so mom and dad had an instant babysitter. And Loretta, being enthusiastic about the opportunity to do so, was overjoyed when Donna came home. Uh, she related one story to me. Um, one day, mom and dad had gone out for some reason or whatever. And uh, she was home alone with Donna when a storm came up. So Loretta was quite fearful of what might happen and grabbed Donna and went and settled by the front door just in case the lightning struck, they'd have a way to get out fast. So that was the kind of sister Loretta was for Donna. During this instance, the family cat, Scotty, came up to where they were sitting, nestled in beside them and started to purr and uh, kind of calm the situation. As time went on, another 10 years passed, a lot more stories I'm sure were out there from Loretta, but time permitting. Um, all of a sudden there was another problem. Dwayne was born to the family. Well now, Donna being 10 years old was, well, five-year-old Dwayne was a handful. Donna would like to have her friends over being a young teenager. And uh, Dwayne would have no part of it. If he wasn't involved, she wasn't going to have any fun. So he was pestering her and pestering her and pestering her until finally mother heard enough of the screaming back and forth and interceded. You didn't argue with mom. But Donna never held any grudges. As a matter of fact, she's responsible for me learning how to skate. Dad made a makeshift rink down in the backyard. So outside went me, Donna, and a wooden chair. And she stayed outside with me pushing this chair around on the rink, trying to learn to skate for as long as I wanted. She never complained. As more time passes, Donna got married. Um, and her husband's job forced them to move around a lot. So with task one, camera rooms, and then out to Victoria. And she fell in love with Victoria. That was the favorite time in her life. But again, being short-lived, he was transferred then back to Kelowna. Unfortunately, in Kelowna, the marriage disintegrated. Um, there were no children, so after the divorce, Donna moved back to Edmonton. Uh, settled in, started a new life for herself. She lived downtown in a high rise on 116 in Jasper, and she attended St. Joseph's Basilica downtown. While at the Basilica, she joined a group that would go out and visit those in the hospital that maybe had no visitors. She took great pride in that, and she was a good listener. As more time goes by, mom and dad, back at the old homestead, things were starting to deteriorate. The house was quite old, and Donna would always go over and help however she could. Whether it was, you know, just visiting or taking mom or dad to medical appointments, it didn't matter, Donna was there. So when dad passed, the house became too much for mom. So as a family, we decided that we'd get mom an apartment, which she feel more safe, and Donna took over the house. Donna was stubborn. Donna didn't like to bother people to do things for her. She wanted to do them herself. And that came to a lot of things you wouldn't really expect her to do, like mow the lawn, shovel snow, and so forth. But Donna 
didn't quit. If she started something, she finished it. Um, and that included mowing the lawn. I don't know how many times I showed her how to start the lawnmower. Uh, and it seemed to work fine for me. But whenever Donna touched the lawnmower, it wouldn't work. So we had neighbors across the street, been there for quite a while, and they would see Donna bringing the lawnmower out. So they'd gather around the front window and for the next couple hours watch Donna do anything but mow the lawn. Now, if you can kick a lawnmower to make it work, it would have worked fine. But she never called me to come down and set things up because she'd feel embarrassed. That's the way she was. Donna, in her early teens, met up with a friend, Joanna Novak. And that friendship blossomed and remained intact. So there was always two cats. Um, Donna's extended family, her nephews and nieces, she couldn't wait to hear how their lives were going. Didn't matter what, Donna was there to listen and she took great pride in their accomplishments and was, was extremely proud of how they all turned out. Loretta's kids, Lance, Scott, Lisa, and Grant, and my three, Anthony, Megan, and Nathan. The old homestead finally failed, so we sold the property. And with Donna's share, she bought a little house not far from here, about a block and a half. Now, when Donna moved in, there were still some elderly people in the neighborhood, a couple of widows across the street. And she befriended one of the, one of the ladies, a Mary. Now, Mary one day came over and was talking to Donna, and she said, I have somebody I want to introduce you to. And he says he does all our handiwork around the house. Um, snow shoveling, looking after the lawn and the flowers, whatever you need, he'll do. And Donna, being independent, wasn't too keen on it at first, but then decided, well, maybe she'd give it a shot. Well, this gentleman's name was Abe, and he was a Muslim. And he took on the task of looking after Donna's yard for her, the, the snow and, and the lawn and whatever. And Donna would throw him a little bit of money every now and then, and that's all he wanted. He wasn't in it to make a living. He had another job. And as time went on and the other two ladies moved away or moved on, it was just Donna and Abe. And for 15 years, he was her guardian angel. Whatever she wanted. And as her health started, her mobility started to fail, Abe would get her groceries for her. If need be, take her to medical appointments. He was always there and never asked for much. I don't understand how they got along, those two, but they did remarkably, because his broken English and Donna's hard of hearing. I don't understand how the communication went, but it went well, and it worked, because I could hardly understand. Donna's favorite times were with family, Christmas especially, whenever Loretta's extended, Loretta's kids and uh, came home and we all went over there for Christmas, Donna just reveled in that kind of thing. I can remember one Christmas where Loretta would always get up Christmas morning, especially early, and start preparing the turkey for the feast. And Donna would stumble downstairs and the two of them would start to chat and reminisce about stuff. And, and eventually what would happen is it would lead to singing. And of course, nobody else in the house is going to be able to sleep through that. So that's how Christmas started. Everybody was up and everything was just better than could be expected. About seven years ago, um, 
I started visiting Donna on the weekends, usually Saturday, sometimes Sunday. And I'd come over to her little house here, but I made sure it was early in the morning. Grab a couple of coffees and a six pack of muffins. Come into the house, I'd sit down with muffins, give her coffee, sit back in a nice comfy love seat. And all I had to say was, how about them blue jays? Well, for the next hour and a half, I listened because I couldn't get a word in edgewise. She loved baseball, but she knew what the team needed, what they should be doing, and why these guys making so much money are making so many mistakes. I gonna miss that. Donna had a knack for uh, gauging people. She could tell if this from a first meeting, if this was a good person or not. And uh, she was generally right. Well, I was having a tough go with my marriage. My marriage was virtually done. So as the time went by, I met someone. And uh, of course, Donna wanted to see who I met. So we had a little meeting and over a couple of coffee again. And uh, after the meeting, we went our separate ways and I couldn't wait to get over to Donna's to get input, just to see what she thought. You know, I valued her opinion. Well, I didn't even have a chance to ask. I walked in the door and it was just a great big smile on her face. And I knew right then that uh, she approved. So in closing, that's just a snapshot of my little sister. Uh, Donna, you will forever be in my heart until my last breath. I love you.
We commend our sister, Donna, to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to her in baptism will be fulfilled. Let's take a moment to open our hearts to the grace of this celebration in our prayers together and worship so we prepare ourselves. Lord Jesus, you came to give us abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring comfort to those who mourn. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give hope to all who believe in you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant, Donna Chiquetto, whom you have called this day to journey to you, and since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite the assembly to be seated, please, to be attentive to God's word. And uh, is it Nathan, you're offering our first reading? Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples. The sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on this day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters, he leads me to revive a drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall not want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house I shall dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
down for the gospel. Because now that we have been united to Christ through baptism and the Holy Spirit, 
our death and his death become one. His resurrection becomes our resurrection. His victory over sin and death becomes our victory over sin and death. The sting of death and its ultimate significance has been removed. Life cannot end because it is life in the embrace of the Father's love. Love never ends, St. Paul said. His love never ends. Through baptism, God entered into the Paschal mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. And now through his own death, she has entered into the fullness of God. Today we give thanks to God for the life of our friend Donna Chiquetto. Donna reminds us there is more to this life than this life. We are grateful for how Donna echoed the life of Christ in her life, how she participated in life and family and in community in meaningful ways. Donna Chiquetto, we give thanks to God for your life, for your love, your friendship, your work and service. We thank God who has called you from all eternity, God who has shaped your life and who has now called you to that special place in heaven where grace and mercy await you. God will complete the good work he has already begun in Donna Chiquetto. God will fulfill the promise of resurrection promised to her in baptism. We trust that Donna Chiquetto stands now in the presence of God and knows the fullness of God's forgiveness and redemption. For it is love that awaits Donna. Indeed, God did send the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God did that for all of us, and each of us, but in a special way, he did that for Donna today. Our God, who is rich in mercy and grace, welcomes her. In the face of compassion and kindness, that is, Jesus greets her. He has prepared a place for her that is fitting and meant just for her, because like all of us, God has created her for himself, unique, irreplaceable, and unrepeatable. We believe Donna now beholds before herself a vision of a new heaven and a new earth, and love never ends. Her love never ends. May Donna remember us before our Father in heaven, until we meet again in that place where every tear will be wiped away from all faces. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May Donna Cacetto and the Chiquetto and the souls of all our faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. The response is, hear our prayer. In baptism, Donna Jaquetto received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our sister Donna was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our family have gone before us and await us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Those, those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Donna seek comfort and consolation. 
heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Donna. Strengthen our hopes that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Mike, to be seated, please, for the purpose of gifts.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Please stand up your face. This bread and drink this cup. And with the blessed virgin until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Donna Chiquetto, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Lead us not. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy. The rest, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory of Christ. Amen. Peace I leave you, my peace I leave you. not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer another sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, how worthy you should have come to my Lord, but only say the word of my salvation.
whatever reason, if you're not coming forward for communion, you can come forward and be in communion with us by receiving a blessing. Just put one arm or two arms across your chest. You can come up for a blessing.
of Donna Cachero, your servant, Cachero. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, may every mark of affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace and in the sure hope of the resurrection, we take leave now of our sister, knowing that one day we shall be with her in heaven. Mm -hmm.